Hi everybody, thank you so much for the support that you're giving us as JS Learning Academy. Welcome to lesson number three. So if you have not watched lesson number one, lesson number two, find the links in the description below. So for lesson number one, we did the introduction part of our indices. Lesson number two, we did some laws of indices such as uh, multiplication, division, index to index. We also did different bases, common index. These are some of the laws of indices that we did in lesson two. For this lesson, which is lesson three, our focus will just be on uh, these three laws of indices. Okay, so let's start with uh, the first one, which is a zero index. What does this zero index say? It says that when you've got a base, okay, so this is example number A, and then the exponent here, it's a zero. This will simply give us what? A one. So remember, we as teachers like using the easiest way to make you understand that anything to the power zero, the answer is equal to one. But that's not true. So let's do this. What if we've got uh, negative a power zero? What are we getting? Are we going to get a one? No, we're not going to get a one. We shall get a negative uh, one like that. This is because this zero has not affected the negative sign. So it will just be a power zero, which will give us a one. One times a negative, it will just be a negative uh, one. So that's it. But if we want this to give us as a one, we're going to say a or negative a inside the brackets power zero. And this of course will give us uh, a one. In this case, we can say a negative is affected as well as a is affected. Okay, I guess you understand something. Now let's try to use numbers and see what will happen. So if you've got four power zero, this will simply give us what? A one, negative four power zero inside the brackets, it will give us a one. So this is where we're saying anything to the power zero will get a, a one. And then one more thing, when you say zero to the power zero, what are we getting? zero to the power zero will it give us a one so comment in the comment section below what you're getting when you find zero power zero what is it that you're getting that's for you let's go to the next property here or the next law which is a negative index all right so let's check out the negative index So when you've got a power negative b, you just see that the exponent has got a negative sign. You have to change this to a positive sign. And how do we get to change this? We are going to write a 1 over all this without a negative sign. So this is how it goes. Or in other ways, the moment you see that the exponent has got a negative sign, you are going to write this O of it, it will go down. And then here you remain with the one on top. That's what you do. What if you've got uh, one over A power negative, you see, power negative B. This also will do the same, it will go on top. So it will be A power B, like this. All of it, it will go on top, down here, or remain with a one, which won't change anything, even if you remove it. So this will be a power b, just like that. Okay, so let's try to use a little bit of some numbers and see if you're able to simplify this. So if you've got four power negative two, okay, four power negative two, this will simply be equal to a one over four power a two, just like that. So this is how you work out negative index. All right, so for fraction index, there is something that you need to understand. So what we need to understand here is uh, when you've got a power m over 
n. So this will simply be equal to a power 1 over n power m. You see the way it looks? Power 1 over n power m. This m is out like that. So that's it. And from this stage, you can now say this. n root of a power m. Now look at this. A fraction power means a root. So this is a root, 1 over n. n will represent a root. That's why when you do the root, you write whatever is here, you write here. Okay. And then this will be a power. This is where it's going to remain. Okay. Let's try to use numbers and see what we're going to get. Let's say you've got, uh, you've got 4 power 1 over 2. This, of course, will be the root. So there is a 2. Square root is written like this. There is a 2 here, but we don't show a 2. And then a 4 there. So this will simply be equal to a 2. Square root of 4, it's a 2. Okay. So this is our example A. For example B, let's say you've got 8 power uh, 2 over a 3. So what is it that you're going to do here? You're going to factor out a 2. So you're, you're going to have something like this. You see the way it looks? And then from this stage, you're going to write the root. Can you see? This is the third um, th uh, cube root, so to say. Cube root because of the third, the, the 3 which is down here. It will come here and you have 8. This 2 will remain right here. So what is the cube root of 8? It's a 2. And then the power will come here, power 2 here. What is 2 power 2? It will give us a 4. So this is how the fractions work. I guess you've gotten one or two things out of this video. Okay. And then one more thing. I know there's a student. I remember there's a student who asked me a question. Like, okay, what if you get this root, you bring it, I mean power, you bring it inside. So it will be like this. The cube root of 8 power 2. Cube root over 64. 8 power 2 is 64. What is the cube root of 64? It's a, a 4. So we're getting the same answer. So it's the same. If you want, you can put this power inside or outside like this. You still get the same, uh, the same answer. Okay. The only problem here is that uh, here you'll be dealing with a bigger number. That's why we encourage students to put it outside so that you don't deal with very big numbers. All right, thank you so much for watching. We end right over here. Please remember to watch the next video and share this video, leave a comment in the comment section. So for the next video, we'll try to answer exam questions and apply the laws of indices we've discussed. This has been Sechamba Jacob and bye-bye.